Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This video, I am going to be open to channel and I wanted to have a conversation with you guys as viewers. While it has been difficult for me to channel the last couple of weeks, and I feel like I'm super transparent and I want to, to continue a connection that is positive, hopeful, and authentic with you. And so I think it's important to share with you that even though I'm a psychic, a medium, a coach, and all that, and I, I have sessions with awesome clients and people, and I help a lot of people in a lot of different ways, I myself go through times when I don't feel all, yay, inspired, awesome. You know, I know it's hard to believe, like shocking, right? I think that there's something up with energy right now in the last two weeks here, because I myself have been feeling more than normal. Now, in my personal life, at the beginning of April, um, a few of you are familiar with this because if you had sessions scheduled with me, you know that I had to actually, for the first time in like, two and a half years actually shift some schedule, make some major cha schedule changes um, because we had a very close family member that was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Um, this person is very close to my family, very close to my family. It's not me or my husband. And it was uh, like being thrown into hell, a big awful nightmare for a couple of weeks. And as it was affecting the people that are the most important people to me. And we got a miracle. So pancreatic cancer is a really tough one. And the individual that was diagnosed with it, uh, very young, mid 40s. <laughs> and very important person. And It's been kind of odd, it's been strange. And at the same time, while this has been happening, there's other things energetic that have been happening. You know, if you follow astrology at all, or if you follow current events at all, any of those areas or genres that you might play in, there are a lot of energetic reasons for us to not feel the best that we could possibly feel. So I layer that into my sandwich of whatever I'm dealing with personally, right? Just like you, you guys come here to this channel and I hope that when you watch some of these videos, you really get some insight. At times when I'm trying to do the channeling, it can get really depressing <laughs> to talk to people who have killed themselves because the energy around the actual um, death, if it's something unexpected like a suicide or a murder, or if it's tragic where it's somebody very young, or if it's something totally unexpected like a cancer or a really difficult battle that someone fought, and so many different ways, reasons, means that it can be really tough to handle and manage that energy in a channeling. And I mean, most of the time I like to think that I'm pretty much a rock star and I can manage energy. I'm pretty damn good at it. Let me just say, I mean, honestly, I am, but I work very hard. I recognize in my own awareness how to keep my energy in a flow state that is positive, productive, healthy. But it doesn't mean I'm always yay, you know, and that when there are things that hit me in my personal life that I need to allow myself room to process like a human being does, because part of my role here on Earth is to be a person. And so I explain things the best I can and I translate the energy the best I can. And I think it's really important for you to see behind the scenes that I'm a real person just like you guys. And so I mentioned we had a miracle and that is, I mean, I can't even, it's hard to even describe how all this went down. But so there was a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. It was unclear at what level it was at. And again, not me or my husband. And we, there was a lot more tests and things that had to be done. And there was tons of conversations that I had with this individual and trying to coordinate things. And deep understandings, a lot of my past came back to me 
in experiences that I've had in my lifetime, losing people, getting divorced, all this kind of stuff that creates an energies of grief that are that feel heavier, you know, for us, difficult opportunities to provide healing for us. <laughs> and after the surgery actually happened, there were like two, there were two, one, two, three organs affected. Two of them were removed and one was like partially taken out. And after they did multiple tests on the cells that were removed, the cancer cells, it was determined after three tests. So it's like a two week period, right? And the week after the, a week, or, a week or so after the actual surgery happened that the cancer was considered precancerous in the stage and therefore there was not a need to kind of be in this status of cancer diagnosis. So the cancer kind of diagnosis was lifted, at least for now, and hopefully for many, many years to come in the future. So my, so my children can have their dad at their wedding, hopefully to see their kids get born. And, oh, it's been really a intense time, but the miracle that we got was it was considered pre-cancer and they think they got it all. And so this individual's on the mend and at home healing and all the people important to this person have been with them and helping and things are trying to get back to normal. The kids are finally back in school and throughout all this, I've worked as much as I could <laughs> because why? Well, gosh, you guys, I know people would totally understand if I didn't, but I love what I do. I love sharing. I love channeling. But the last couple of weeks, it's been tough to actually channel. And on my list of channeling, outside from like my own healing team, like angels and guides, people ask me too, would you channel any, any, anything else? Like, do you talk to angels or Jesus or what? I'm like, yeah. I just don't do that on Above Life channel because that's not the purpose of Above Life channel is more focused on afterlife celebrities and influential people, former human people that have a connection to us in a way where we can look at their lives and kind of see them as uh, regular people and then as kind of sometimes on a pedestal and then trying to make sense of what their life may have really been like and learning from not their mistakes, but their, their reflections, like the stories that they share and the new insights that they have as they are a spirit in the afterlife, regardless of how they died. And it really touches a lot of people that way to connect with celebrities because they have such a platform already and so it can really help people to heal, to shift, change, clear, and to be inspired. And that's the whole point is to inspire your spirit. And so, my little list that I have of dead people that I've been wanting to channel, I have like three post-its in front of me right now. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who have killed themselves, <laughs> unfortunately. And so that energy is tough to tap into and channel right away initially because the people who are viewing it or watching it or wanting to know about that person are usually curious about the death point and the transition point. And because of that energy of that, that's icky to me. So I have to kind of get past that. I have to disconnect from whoever's watching or whoever wants that person to be channeled. I have to disconnect from the audience and then just connect with that person as an energy. But I'm human and so I feel there, that pain too that you guys feel for that person, no matter who it is in the afterlife. And so whether I knew them or not or was a fan or not, it doesn't matter. I just, I feel it as a human, you know? And so that layered on top of my own stuff, um, has just been too much. I just, I've been like, nope, I'm gonna do my bare bones. I've been able to do my sessions because the sessions are awesome, private, one-on-one, -on -one, connecting. Um, so, and I've done a few channels too. But I'm also um, planning a graduation party because <laughs> I have a high school senior, she's my oldest. And so, uh, doing that. And I also have a retreat weekend coming up where I'm traveling for five days and so, 
a uh, very busy human life, you know? So this particular video I would like to ask, there's so many different um, afterlife spirits that I would chat with and I would like to ask, I'm gonna just open up, kind of see what kind of insight or information um, asking my healing team aligned with my highest good, the energy of God, creator, source, universe, to align, to support, to bring an energy of consciousness that is supportive, loving, and with a connection to wisdom, the wisdom within. So my ability to receive has definitely been on the lower side right now because I'm a little, the handling of the stress and stuff has been, I get crabby, that's what happens. And then I get annoyed with people. And so, like anybody, like I could get just like, I could get a little snippy, a little snippy. I know, hard to believe, right? I seem so nice. And some people are like, it's so funny. I met this lady came to one of my in-person retreats and she'd been watching my stuff and listening to my stuff for a while. And she came and I'll never forget. It was kind of funny. She said, oh my gosh, you're so cool. Like, uh, she says, you always seem so nice and so sweet and so caring. She's like, but you're fun, you know? I'm like, okay, yeah, I can be a badass, thanks. <laughs> I'm like a human. I can have a drink with you and <laughs> I can laugh and vent and stuff too. It's like, I am not perfect. That's not why I'm doing this. If I was perfect, I would never be a human person. So don't let other psychics and mediums seem like we're untouchable or we know so much more than you because that is not true. And many psychics and mediums who do the work that inspires your spirit will, will attest to that. They will reassure you that they are not perfect and that they are not there. We don't, their job isn't to tell you what to do because we know so much. It's not it. That's not the case. That's not how it works. All right. Um, so let's see. There are like three people that I can feel kind of in the periphery that if I invited them on, I could channel right now. Maybe I should do that. I should do a channeling video. I just, the, dip, uh, the suicide stuff is just tough. And there's so many like here's a couple that I'm looking at channeling. Uh, Mac Miller, who you might be familiar with. Uh, I think he was a rapper technically. Um, had some drug issues and was associated with Ariana Grande. They were together for a time before he died. And he uh, suicide, I believe. I think it was suicide. It feels like it, but he makes me think like drugs are all suicide. So I don't know. I don't know exactly until I chat with him. And he's a little more trendy, you know, contemporary, young, for younger people. Um, Chris Cornell, um, again, a medication thing. Um, his death was very unexpected and antidepressant related. And so I've been getting lots of, I've been getting multiple requests from him or to channel him. And uh, his actual anniversary of his transition date is coming up in May, so I need to do him. Um, I'd like to do that soon. But again, it's like th those two together, does that really sound like a great bunch of fun to you? And if I don't really even know them, or I'm not really super interested in what their music was or who they were, then it's hard for me to get interested and excited to talk to them because it has to be kind of interesting to me too, you guys, because it's like, it's my channel. Like doing stuff that I don't feel great about, it's gonna show, you're gonna know because I can't lie. Like I have no, does this look like a poker face to you? Mm. No poker face here. All right, so, um, and then like I have some, but my go-tos that I enjoy talking to, I like to talk to Wayne Dyer. I like to talk to Louise Hay. Um, I enjoy talking to David Bowie. I like talking to Freddie Mercury, Marilyn Monroe. Um, Robin Williams is kind of cool to talk to. I have some stuff from him that I haven't shared with you yet. Um, but I'm going to be channeling him this weekend when I am on my retreat. So he's the one that will be coming up for me to channel on my retreat. And... Who else I can't think? Um, I was thinking about doing a mom's theme, like a Mother's Day theme and talking to moms on the other side, which would be cool. And so of course, one of the major ones is Princess Diana. I just shared one with her not too long ago, but I'd like to do another one with her because I will be in Disney World and she went to Disney World and I know the exact hotel that she stayed at. And so I'd like to stay on there and channel. That would be cool. And 
there's a lot of sweet energy. You know who's been showing up to me since last week? So I've been going to counseling um, to help keep my head together when it comes to all of the stress and the things that are going on in life. There's a lot of life changes, like with my daughter graduating and trying to get off to college and all the financial stuff of that is a nightmare, you guys. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's like buying a new car and I don't, have, I don't even have a new car. I drive like a 2008 Honda Psychic Minivan. So it's not like, and my husband drives like a, a pilot that's like a 2006. So our kids have nicer cars than we do. Like we have a Toyota and our kid has a nicer car than we do. But anyway, so that's a whole thing, you know. That plus all the stuff going on um, with the health stuff and the kids super impacted and dealing with the school and then missing time off school and time work and then the weather's been wonky and the kids had to drive like, the hospital was an hour and 15, 20 minutes away and they had to drive during the bad snowstorm and I was freaking out thinking they were gonna be like in the ditch somewhere and it has been a very crazy April. And then randomly, I also had somebody, I was gonna tell you the two people that came to me, but I'll tell you that. Okay, so then I'm driving back from the counselor who I love, who's been with our family for like, gosh, like 10 years. You know, she helps the kids, she helps me, she helps all of us. Just kind of put your head together. If you don't go to counseling, there's a good chance there's a lot wrong with you. <laughs> because you need to have a sounding board that's a neutral third party. It's awesome. And if your health insurance covers it, then it's like coaching, you know, to me. I mean, I think it's fabulous. And so, um, um, an interesting story how I met the counselor too, actually. I can't talk about that publicly, but it's fascinating. Let's just say my counselor totally understands all of this stuff. <laughs> and so, um, which I think many counselors do because you'd be surprised how many psychologists, um, teachers, uh, social workers, um, counselors, therapists that I have that are clients, it's fabulous. Anyway, um, so I'm driving back from this counseling session. It's about a 25-minute drive. And I'm in the car and I'm randomly, I was doing something else I can't remember. I, was, I think I was listening back to one of my, um, an audio I think I did or a meditation, I, or not, not a meditation, an audio I did for one of my private groups, I think, cause just checking the sound quality and making sure that, does this make sense? Does this fit in here with the content I'm sharing this week? Should I share it this week or should I hold it until two weeks from now after I do this intuition stuff or whatever? You know, try, kind of thinking about that. So I was working. And then I was done with it. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to listen to radio. Turn on the radio. I'm like, random stations. <laughs> and I hear Under Pressure, David Bowie and Freddie Mercury. And Under Pressure is a song that I remember, vivid memory of being back in college in the dorm, my first year in the dorm. And my roommate had the tape, this tape from the, the um, at that time it was like Wayne's World, I think, movie. And it was Bohemian Rhapsody. And there's something else. Um, anyway, and she liked Queen. So she also had the, uh, it was like a cassette tape. <laughs> so one side I think was, gosh, I don't know if it was Real Rocky. I don't know what it was. But the one side was uh, Under Pressure and I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. And so I would listen to it and you could hear it just playing out the window, you know. It's just awesome. So it was a memory I had. So I'm like, oh, because I was just talking about college and how to manage the finances of that. and the summer and kids are all going to be home. How, you know, how is my work schedule going to look like? How am I going to get videos done? How's all this like thinking about the summer and my plans? Because I have to release summer dates like June dates for sessions. I need to release that so I, people know when I'm going to work, but I don't even know when I'm going to work yet. <laughs> so I have to figure it out. So I was doing that and then psh, on the radio, boom, under pressure. I'm like, yeah, under pressure. Thanks. And I just teared up. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Everything comes full circle, synchronistic, synchronistic, beautiful. That is connection, that's energy alignment. So it was Bowie and um, Freddie Mercury. And then, so then, like that was I think like last Thursday and then like literally on Sunday I was in town for something, I can't remember, I had to pick something up and I was coming back home and I turned on the radio. It's like, a, it's like maybe a 10 minute drive, probably like an, a seven or six minute drive. I turn on the radio and guess what song is on? Under Pressure. And it's like toward the beginning, so I'm blasting it. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, Freddie, I love you. And Bowie, David, I just love you too. You guys are awesome. They're just like, they like squish my shoulders and lift me up. Like, come on, Bridget, come on. Come on now. It's kind of like, don't be feeling sorry for yourself. 
you know, get your shit together. <laughs> I'm like, okay. They're like, life is not that bad. You just have been carrying a lot right now. Just let it be and let everybody else take their own shit and you just be present, show up and just be, you know? And I'm like, all right, all right. So I thought I'm gonna record a video and chat with you guys. This is a long video. This is not a channeling video. Hmm. No cameos, no surprise guests, none of it. Well, if you count Freddie Mercury and David Bowie and everybody else, everybody that I mentioned, I literally could see them and they're all like standing, kind of leaning up against the wall, just kind of watching, like, like we're in a staff meeting or something. Like they're being quiet and I'm the teacher, you know, all those people. And so I'm like, I'm not sure who I'll channel. I think I'm kind of feeling like I might channel now. Mm-hmm. Yep. This video is actually recorded on, I don't even technically know the date. Let me look. Today is April 29th. Started, started the day with a sick kid, but now he's at school. It was an allergy thing. But um, yeah, April 29th, 2019. So you have a feel for this when I share it. I think I'll share it in May probably. If I do, I'm sure I'm talking in circles. But gosh, I think for some of you, you might actually like genuinely want to know about me as a person. And I think you should understand that all psychics and mediums are real human beings too, like people. Like real people. Like we're not famous. We just talk to famous people, you know? It's not about that. Like I'm not, that's not my, that's not my, I don't know, that's not my goal, you know? <laughs> I just, I enjoy channeling because I know that it helps people like you who are watching. And I know that it can totally make a difference in your life because when I listen to somebody doing a great TED talk or a positive speech or a great book on audio, I just, I can get so motivated and inspired by people and the ideas that they stir up in me and how they inspire me to be a better person and to really show up for life. And I know that that's what channeling does. It connects you to your spirit, which is a whole nother aspect, a great powerful resource that exists within all of us that we never really think about because it's not in the mind, it's in, it's in the energy of who we are. And so we have access to all these wonderful tools and it just takes some help in translation and to introduce you to them. I hope that I do that. And so now this is the very human side of Bridget. So it is nice to meet you if we haven't met before. It's nice to meet you. I'm glad that you are here. Most of the videos are not like this. Most of them are channeling and you can go look at the playlists to see if there's some of your favorites or just scroll down the big list. Go to the main YouTube, my main YouTube channel. Click on that little icon, go to the main channel and just scroll down the feed because not everybody has a playlist. There are lots of people that I've interviewed and chatted with in the afterlife that don't have playlists. So. Start with the playlist, then look at the main feed and check it out. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here at Above Life Channel. Remember the purpose here is to inspire your spirit to fill you up with hope because this is your life. This is your life. It's yours. It is yours. What a gift. So go live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.